Welcome back to Rotten and Forgotten. The guy was on the Facebooks again the other day. God, quit doing that. Anyways, we found this 1972 Olympic. Now you might be asking yourself, why would you get an Olympic that's, you know, dang near in perfect condition? Well, you know, I'm really only after the motor. Now this motor is a 335. You can tell it's a 335 because that's what the tag says on it. I want a 335 to go into the land. But before we get there, we gotta make this one run. This Olympic was parked in the shed 23 years ago and it hasn't seen the light of day in those 23 years. Long story short, the shed fell down and the guy had to, you know, put it somewhere. So he put it out in the pine row for a couple weeks and that's where I came in. And, you know, offered him a couple of 20s and it went in the back of my pickup. So let's get you guys on in here and, you know, check this rig out because it is pretty rotten and it was forgotten. I mean, it just fits right into the channel. So let's take a look at this thing. We'll get your guys' noses up in here and take a good gander at this 335. You know, she might have been in the pine trees for more than a couple years, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. There's a motor, a tank, you know, even an exhaust. I mean, that's pretty rare. Chain case, primary clutch, <laughs> it's, it's all here. We're gonna have to pull this Tilly apart probably and pull the head off most likely. Make sure there's no, you know, rust and debris in there and try to get some sparkles. Yeah, then we'll rebuild on this Tilly and then, you know, we're gonna go for a rip. Now that might be pretty optimistic. I think it's gonna happen though. I think I got some faith in this rig. It, you know, it should run. That's, I shouldn't have said that, but other than that, you know, the chassis, it's, I don't know, it's kind of there. The track is actually in really good condition for, you know, the age. It's not new anymore, but, and not only that, we got a whole set of bogeys. Well, there is a whole set. I had to pull one, you know, for parts, but there's a full set of bogeys under there. Now, on the other hand, this hood, she's, she's seen better days. It's not good. This old hood has more rivets in it than there is plastic, but... I tell you what, she sure has a lot of breather holes now, so <laughs> free air and whatnot. Probably just trying to get the most bang for their buck. Anyways, you know, we can probably catalog that. Sure. Let's, you know, start digging into this thing and making some noise. Before we really dive into this motor, let's just start nice and easy and work this uh, belt guard off. And then, you know, we're gonna take a gander at our clutching and, you know, take a better look at that side of the motor. You know, we're probably gonna need, you know, a good hammer and just love tap that. Not, not hard taps, love taps. That's, that's what we're gonna do. Get that pin to slide over and <laughs> it should just pop right off there. Get a lubricator a little bit here. Oh yeah, that should do her. And, you know, use our handy dandy lightweight hammer and her small punch, and just, you know, give her a couple tell. Look at that. Back to factory condition, I think. Well, that's cataloged. I don't know how I get that front part off, though. Is it just this screw? Might be. Holy cow. It's not even stuck. Okay, I lied, it's stuck, I think. What are you turning on in there? Oh, yeah. So, we're gonna have to get an impact gun on this rig and just right out of there. We're gonna apply a little lube on there. Applied. Now, impacto. Well, I don't know. That's not working. We need ourselves a pliers, I'm thinking. Well, this should work. You know, it's not what we should be using, but it fits. Yep. Oh, it's not working. 
I lied. Better apply a little more, you know, lube on there and get ourselves a vice grip. I was going to go with the pliers, but I think this is going to do a little better job. Take the impactos and, you know, just right off. We're going to, you know, this thing should, you know, just come right off there, right? Oh, yeah. Look at there. Expertly cataloged. We got that shield out of the way. You know, the clutches, they're there. They should come around, I think. What I really noticed is this external coil. That's uh, that's gonna make troubleshooting a whole lot easier. You know, you don't have to pull the whole flywheel off to get into her, but that's a good thing there. I'm liking that. Now, before we dive too deep into this rig, you know, getting into the world in 1972 and the land of the 335, I should make clear that this is the first 335 I've ever owned. I don't know that much about them. I haven't Googled anything other than, you know, are they good? I didn't even Google that, I just went and picked it up. So, I know there's a lot of experts out there that are just red face smashing the keyboard, you know, writing out, you know, every single spec and detail that I didn't go over. Well, I'm sorry. This is my first rodeo. There's gonna be mistakes. And you know, you don't learn until you snap some bolts and you make some bad decisions. And luckily, I'm good at both those. So, you know, let's pull the spark plug out and yeah, get after it. <laughs> now it appears this plug is a good old one incher, I think. Oh, yep, it fits. So that's, you know, pretty neat. It wasn't too tight either. That's good. Let's see what we got going on in here. Threads feel all right. <laughs> yeah, that's got some sludge on there. Looks like she might have been, you know, a little rich, but that's better than being lean in my world. And it looks dark in there. I need to get a flashlight or something. We got to stick something in that hole and, you know, inspect. I got the good old camera wand thingy. I need to get a little smaller one so I can really get in the cylinder, but it's looking pretty darn good, actually. There you're looking at the exhaust port. That little hole up there, that's your decompression valve, you know, but it's looking pretty decent. Little streak in there, a little bit of rust or something. I think the best bet's gonna be pull this cylinder head off and, you know, really take a good gander at her just to make sure, you know, we're really just trying to get this rig to fire so we know that, you know, it is a survivor and then when I'm gonna, you know, do a swap or something with it, I'll put the, you know, gaskets in or whatever, but for now, we're just trying to make her breathe. That's what we're working on, so hang with me here. I think we're gonna dump a little oil down here since the cylinder looks pretty good. Make sure there's a lot of lubricity and try to pull the rope over. Probably gonna have to work on the rewind by the way that looks. Anyways, you know, we'll put the plug on there, pull the rope over after we get her oiled up and uh, look for some sparkles. If we got sparkles, there's a 95% chance this thing's gonna pop off. We're gonna be dumping a little bit of clots in there, you know, the good stuff. The good smelling stuff, at least, I don't know. Oh yeah, that's, that's a good smell. Just, you know, a little bit. Oh, that's more than a little bit. Enough to make that cylinder happy. There's a drain plug on the bottom. We can always drain it out, but now we got that oil in there, you know, lubing things up. We're just gonna turn this rig over by hand and listen. Ooh. She sounds just a little bit on the crunchy side. Not cool, but it's turned over free. That's, you know, good. Feeling pretty good about her. We're gonna pop this head off and, you know, just take a gander in there. Just, you know, just a little gander, that's all. We're gonna lube them up real good, you know. Something like that. Oh, yep, yep, that one's real good now too. The old DeWalt, you know, should do the trick, but we're going to let that lube sit a little bit and undo our throttle and the wiring. 
and probably the exhaust springs too while we're at it. This one by hand. God forbid that. You know, sometimes you gotta use the hand tools. Not always the electronic ones, even though they're fancy and nice. The hand ones, you know, in the hands of the right guy, way faster. But I'm not that guy, and the electronic ones are a lot easier. You know, I could battle a half stroke and ratchet in there, but I think I'm just going to take the muffler off. And then I can check it for mices too, make sure none of those guys moves in there. Lubrication, you know, <laughs> it's key. What's going on with you now? Speak to me. Come on, out here. So you can tell me if uh, this is a stock muffler or if that's something, you know, aftermarket. I don't know. If it is stock, it's pretty cool, but I'm pretty sure this looks like my twin muffler. I thought they cracked, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna use, you know, a hand ratchet. I guess my hands still work, so might as well. Okay, it's the moment of truth. What did I forget? Plugged in. Let's just do that. Yep, that's a motor. We're here on the bench now, and uh, first things first, we gotta try to get this case apart so we can pull this shield off so we can get the head off of there. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna, you know, battle these cases. If they haven't been cracked in a while, they can get really stuck, at least on the 247s, because there's a, uh, you know, a steel roll pin that goes into aluminum, and they, you know, they corrode, and it, they get stuck. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Hopefully these bolts will come out nice. Looking pretty good on this one so far. This apparently was an electric start model, or could be. There's a plate there. I'm not sure if the flywheel's gonna have, you know, the little starter gear guys on there or not. Working on this case here, I just wanted to show you this. You know, you see this spring here? That's an extra one, you know, to make this throttle plate close snappily. Apparently she was getting a little sticky. You know, me and this guy, we could have been friends for sure. That's right out of my playbook, I'd say. Anyways, we're gonna get these bolts off here pop this plate off, you know pull the recoil off too, give that some love and then we're gonna pop this Cylinder head off that easy. Let's get her done We were having such good fun until you know <laughs> they threw the old flathead screw in there There's a good chance that's gonna be stuck So we're gonna pull this base plate off the motor, you know these screws here studs are probably gonna come with that's kind of normal and then we'll, uh, you know, screwdriver these off, impact those them off. It's probably going to require some torching or heating, so we may have to remove the nice literature off the table and, you know, get get to work. But whatever. Yep, that one came out as a stud. It happens. Just one stud came out, that's a good sign. Doing pretty good. Come on out of there, buddy. Oh yeah. What I found on these Rotaxes is, uh, you know, you can turn forever and, you know, usually strip these out with your hand. But if you use the old impact, gently, you can usually get them to come out 
if they're going to come out. If it doesn't want to really come out easy, I usually, you know, apply a little heat on the case here and that seems to help it. But I've seen some snap too, so it depends on the motor. Let's see what this guy wants to do, if he's going to be an easy one or not. Coming, not the easiest, but oh, spoke too soon there. Cool. Let's do it again. There we go. We're gonna try to get this case cracked here. See if we can't find some wildlife or remnants of. What I like to do is, you know, get a plethora of screwdrivers, flathead variety, and just start, you know, working it. And all of a sudden, she'll just pop right off. This one might actually go pretty darn good, actually. Here, that'll work. Oh, I see some mousage. This is good. Yep. No, not good. What's going on in here, little buddies? Oh no! Who am I forgetting here? Is there a bolt hiding? There might be a bolt hiding. It seems like there's a bolt hiding. Okay, time out. I'm gonna zip uh, this decompression valve plate off. Make sure there's nobody hiding underneath there. What can I say? <laughs> there's still a bolt here. That should come out too. We'll just give her a little zip zap with the Ooga Dooga machine and then the case might just fall right apart. Oh yeah, she's coming. There. Guess what? It's gonna fall right apart. You guys get the first look. Is it gonna be bad? I don't know. Ah! Oh no. It's not good. That's not that bad. I think they stayed out of, you know, the important stuff, but. <sighs> Dang it. One time, you know, mouse free motor, that'd be cool. I probably shouldn't classify them as mice, you know, it might be a ground squirrel or something of that nature. I don't know. All I know is they got a pretty nice nest and it smells <laughs> delicious. Ugh. Let's get that cleaned up before we go any further. We got the sucker over here and it's got some sucking to do. Luckily, this looks pretty fresh, you know, within the last 10 years, so it should come out of there. Let's just hope they didn't, you know, do any more damage. Our wires look pretty darn good, so, you know, if they're just playing in the case and they weren't chewing on my wires, we'll let it slide. But if there's damage in here, not gonna be happy, I'll tell you that much. We got the sucking done there, so that's, you know, good. Still some debris in there, I'll have to go grab an air hose, but this is a perfect example why you want to uh, check these rigs over because you fire this baby up with all that debris in there, mouse dung and whatnot, you could have a fire, you know, you could melt down a cylinder, and that's a problem if you only got one. Or, you know, your rig could just smell, you know, mousy, and that's not fun. The wires look pretty good, you know, so if they're just staying down here, you know, that's probably going to be acceptable. But this room's not going to be for rent anymore for, you know, the future mices, mouses. The guy was preparing to get the last four bolts off of this rig here to slide this shroud off. And then I looked down at this, you know, fan shroud. Four bolts popped that off. Well, my four bolts are already snapped off, so that's, you know... That's great.
The guy before me had a lot of Ooga Dooga power, apparently. So that's, you know, like I said, just nifty. Anyways, we're gonna get these four bolts off, slide that shroud over, pop the head off. Well, the good news is I'm gonna be able to get this, you know, leaned over enough to get my head off and, you know, inspect and whatnot. Hopefully the points and whatnot are good. You know, this will come off when I pull the flywheel anyways, but I really don't wanna do that if I don't have to. Just being lazy and whatnot. The bad news is I need to get all that junk out of the fins. The vacuum does some, but you know, the stuff in here and whatnot, just gotta get an air hose in here and Well, that's kind of where the bad news comes in. Our good old air compressor blew a gasket the other day. I've been waiting for that to come in, you know, but it ain't here yet. But, got a 427 out in the shed. You can bring her on around, let the horses sing on that rig and get some PSIs rolling through the door and, you know, over to our motor. So we're gonna do that. Let's go side quest this real quick into the darkness. Oh, here's the old girl. You know, there might be a mouse or two in this rig too, but it's hard to see. Now is she gonna start up? That's the real question. If the battery's got any juices. Oh, that moved. Okay. Oh, like a glove. Come on now, you stay running. Oh, we're pulled up to the shop here. I'm gonna turn that compressor on and let her build some juices. My guy's got some air pressure now, so that's good. Let's get the rest of this mouse hut out of here. Let's get back to business here, okay? We got the mouse poo kind of cleaned out of this rig. Now let's just, you know, take a gander at the insides of the rig, right? Yep, that's what we're gonna be doing. Okay, before you get mad at me, I'm gonna zip these two off with the impactos, just so I don't pull the, you know, rod out. You know, I don't want the threads to come out of the rod and then you gotta re, I don't want any of that. I just want these bolts to come off the top. I'm just loosening. Don't, don't get upset. It's not, not worth it. No. There. That wasn't so bad now, was it? Here we go. This guy slid over. Dang it, I thought it failed. There we go. Okay. What do we got going on here? Some carbonage buildup? Other than that, she's looking decent. This is what we got going on on the inside. She's looking pretty good. I know you professionals are like, that's horrible, but <laughs> it'll run. That's what I'm saying. As long as we can find some spark somewhere. If we got a big steel or borrow it, I don't know. Okay, we got your guys' nose stuck right up the exhaust pipe. Now this is kind of what I'm looking for when I'm making sure the rings aren't stuck without pulling the head. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a little slop in the rings there when I just barely move this. You can see them go up and down within the gap of the ring on the piston. So the rings are sticking to the sidewall like they should, that little bit, and the piston's moving up and down. There's just a little bit of slop there. It's hard to see on camera, but it's easy to see with your eye, you know, and that's telling me the rings aren't seized on the piston. If you can't get that slop between the two rings there, inside their brackets, holder, whatever, on the piston, that's telling you you got a problem. I'll do the same thing on the uh, carburetor side, looking in, and if they're both moving like that, there's about a, you know, 90% chance they aren't stuck, 
and it looks really good on the inside of here. So I'm assuming they're not. You should never assume, but I'm going to. So yeah, we'll pull the carburetor off, check the other side. Then we're gonna slap the lid back on here using, you know, my original gasket. I know it's not the right thing to do, but we ain't doing a rebuild and there's nothing wrong with it. We'll clean her up good, slap her on there. A gasket kit, you know, is $14 or whatever. Not a big deal if it goes out, we'll pop the three bolts out, do what we just did and get down to business replacing. But odds are, I'll, oops, I'll slap that in there and we'll be good. So for now, you know, when I, you know, move this motor to something else, we might put gaskets in, whatever. We're trying to be cheap here. It's, you know, 71, 50 something years old, right? It doesn't matter. This thing's seen some stuff. It'll be fine. So the internet calls for, you know, 20 foot pounds of torque. We're going old school. Yeah, that ain't digital. I ain't got one of those. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, she's slipping on the guy. Come on now. Oh, that's about 20. Yeah, there we are. There. There's my 20. There should be. Now, I don't know how accurate this thing is, you know, maybe we're torquing to 15, maybe 25. We're in the ballpark. That's what we're shooting for here. So, yeah, torque elated. Let's pop this carburetor off and, you know, eye in on the rings on this side. If they look good, we can put the cover back on and dig into this carb. After that, this motor's going back in that sled. One pull, we'll see what we got going on. Let's not get too excited here though. You know what I'm saying? I tend to do that. Okay, we're gonna pop this carburetor off. We're moving this throttle cable holder thing out of the way so I can get my wrench in here a little better. Not taking it off necessarily yet, but just Relocating it a little bit. Now you know my specialty 9013 is going to fit in there a whole lot better. Make life a whole lot easier. Carburetor removed. Now that sounds good. Now I suppose the guy should empty out some of the juices that are in here. Not sure what's in here exactly. Probably some two-stroke oil for me. Other than that, I'm not for certain. Oh yeah, lots of oilage from myself. I'm not making a mess now, let me tell you what. Oh, I'm missing. Completely. Oh dear, Mark. Ah, get in there. There. Well, I dumped half of it on the table here, so that's, you know, good. Well, this thing sits here and, you know, oozes out that good old clots oil. Let's go work on that carburetor. The only thing I'm gonna pull off this carburetor for now is this tube. Then we're just gonna drop her in, you know, the Dawn dish soap duck magic. And then we'll be sitting pretty darn good, I think. I'm also gonna remove this fuel filter because, you know, don't want that to get water in it. Okay, here we go. Filsen in. Duck solution, heading right in after it.
Could have used a little bit more duckies there, but. The Hobo Freight ultrasonic cleaner, it's doing its thing over there. We're gonna start putting this motor back together and then we're gonna check for spark. And that's kind of a big deal, you know, if we want it to run, so let's get after it, I suppose. We'll start by putting this crank plug back in. Now that I got all my lubrication out. It's good to keep things lubricated, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna start putting things kind of back together maybe. Pretty sure that went like that. Recoils, you know, recoiling, so that's swell. Let's install it. Well, the mounting plate's coming back off because, you know, a guy forgot to put the screw in. <sighs> Silly. That's okay. Well, fellers, it's that time. Make or break. Let's see if we can't get a sparkle out of this thing. Oh yeah. We're sparking like crazy. That saves me a lot of time, a lot of effort. That's good. If we can get that carburetor tuned in, we're gonna have ourselves a running, well, a possible running 335 by the end of the night. Okay, our carb's done. We let her bake, you know, three times. Just keep flipping her. It's not gonna hurt anything. That's for dang sure, you know. It's only gonna make things easier. There we got the old uh, return line. It's coming off now, like so. She's cleaning up, so that's really good. The inside of this thing is looking just peachy. The throttle edge, you know, she's moving freer. A little sticky, not too bad. We're gonna move the ultrasonic cleaner out of the way for a minute, disassemble this thing, take lots of pictures, you know, cause I'm not that good at doing it yet. And then, uh, yeah. We're also gonna screw in our jets here, or our needles, I should say. My bad. Write down whatever they were. We'll check the Google machine, make sure you know we're in the right specs for a 335. And yeah, you know, clean her up, slap some new parts in there, throw her on the motor. We got spark. This thing just has to work. We got compression. We should have ourselves something. Maybe a backfire and turd or Maybe, you know, the next great ripper. Who knows? Well, we're about to know after a minute or two here. Let's just get after it. We've got some crud built up on this diaphragm and she's crispy, so probably wouldn't have ran even if the ball valve is, uh, you know, not stuck. Good chance that's stuck. Needle looks pretty darn good on this one, so that's good. We're just gonna keep tightening bolts on this rig, getting things ready. I suppose we can check and see if the clutch does anything. That might be kind of important. There, that's snug on there. Flip this rig around and push on that thing, I suppose. Oh yeah, like butter. Wow, that is surprising. That's good, really, really good. We better get our uh, roller bearing, you know, freed up in here. We're gonna use a WD-40 for that. What's she looking like in here? Well, first off, it's a bigger shaft diameter than the 247s. That must be the 70s that they're all talking about. Flip the sheath over, lift this rig up. 
wall. That's got to be one of the cleanest primaries I got. She's looking pretty good. The little flippers are flipping, you know. A little bit of wear, but that's to be expected. There's really not that much wear though. I mean, for the age of this rig, like, it's looking pretty darn good. I'm gonna put just a touch of this Lubramat um, multi-purpose lithium grease, you know. The internet says the Skidoo grease, you can't find it, and it's just super tacky. You want some kind of tacky grease. Well, this stuff's pretty tacky. I mean, it's not the tackiest, but I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. Teach their own. Some guys like to run them dry, you know, whatever. Just putting it on this outside shaft. It's what I got, it's what I'm using. It's gotta be better than what's on there because there ain't nothing that's been sitting for a long, long time. Okay, slide this back on there. I'm gonna put a spring on there or what you might call it, sheave. I don't know what you wanna call this one. Outside sheave, I suppose. That sounds like a good name for it. There. A little bit nicer. That's secured and the clutch is just like butter. Good butter, not bad butter either. You know what I'm saying? Our carburetor's done baking in there. So we're gonna extract that and hit her with the old carb spray, you know, get her looking fresh. She's gonna be looking fresh when we're all done. Working on installing, you know, the bread and butter of it all. Big old Tilson HR carburetor. Oh, I did this one on backwards here. Yes, sir. Like that. I guess it goes like that. Here comes the Tilly. pretty good about that okay what do we got left put the throttle doodadder on there you know and uh, hook up some fuel lines probably clean out the tank put some gas in it and start it that's what I'm thinking oh yeah you're gonna fix this uh, plug she's kind of gross torque to the correct foot pounds. Yeah, I know what they are. It's in my head. <laughs> this thing's got some compression. That is good. My arm might not like it. We probably will hook up that decompression though. Wow. So, we got the carb reinstalled. The carb's rebuilt, somewhat. And the engine is looking healthy as a three-legged horse. I mean, next up, we're just gonna clean off that fuel tank and then clean up the sled a little bit, drop this rig in, see if we can't get her to start, make some noise, you know. Run? I doubt that. We gotta get that tank out. To get the tank out, we gotta pull what's left to the hood latches out. That ought to be fun. There's a will, there's a way. And I've got the will. Okay. There, 
that's out of the way. Are you gonna, you know, come out? Or what's going on? She's coming out. Heck yeah. There she be. These lines are, you know, they'll work for what we're doing, I think. Original tank lining. That's neat. Okay, what's next? What what's going on here? Oh hey, look at the neck is snapped off. That's standard. Okay. Those lines are a little not so good. Yeah, and whoo, the fuel in this thing. It smells like it was bad in 1974. We got some cleaning up to do on this rig, you know, just mildly, nothing too crazy. Well, she's looking a whole lot better. And not only that, we found ourselves, you know, a little chisel looking thing. Yep. That's pretty neat. It's like brand new too. Wow. You know, we just vacuumed her out here and I forgot. I haven't opened up this box yet. What's in here? Open up. Well. We got ourselves a bush latte. Yep, me and this guy could have been friends for sure. We got all the debris cleaned up. Let's drop that motor back in here. She ain't quite light, but I bet it's powerful. It's, you know, getting in there. Jump onto the bolts and we are home. Oh, it's up to the back. What's going on there? Why are you not in there? Well, what in tarnation is going on, buddy? Now we're on. Three bolt secured. either gonna run or she ain't. There's some really gross junk left in this tank. I should have cleaned it out a little better, but I didn't, so. We're still gonna run it. Well, folks, every revival comes down to the pole. And we're there, so let's see if we can't make something happen. This is the first start in 23 years. Let's see if we can't make her go.
think I have my kill switch on. Like normal. Recoil is, uh, you know, back to recoiling. Pulled the knot right out of it. Yeah. What are the chances of that? Pretty good. Here we go. Second try. Potentially the first start in 23 years. That's older than me, by the way. So that's pretty neat. Pulls over like a mule. Oh, did you hear that? smoky but that's a runner you know 23 years sitting in a shed and it comes right back around they don't make things like they used to you know I just want to say thank you for tuning in to Rotten and Forgotten come back next week we'll do something fun I'm sure you'll be the first to know I guess second technically but Anyways, you know, I got things to do, people to see, a nap to take.